Like, people just have these ideas. Mm -hmm. And whatever your idea is that you think Latinos are is usually wrong because Latinos are so different, Mm -hmm. even within the same family. Yeah. They vote different. It's not the same. It's not homogenous. Yeah. Yeah. It's not at all. And so I think that that, you know, I wanted to show a, a story that, like, just straight up addresses that head on. I want to move on to talk about your CBS sitcom. Oh, yeah. That's based on the piece you wrote for the New York Times, Mexican Beverly Hills. What is going on with that? I don't know if you can say much, but that is so, I mean, everything you do is dope. I just feel like (laughs) you must be out here pitching every day, all day, and all your amazing ideas are coming to life. Yes. A round of applause. Thank you. But how did that come to be? You're working with Wilmer Valderrama and some other folks. I mean, I, I like I like to say I took I took more shots than Kobe. You know, <laughs> Kobe took the most shots in the history of the NBA. Also made so many points. Yeah, became a legend, MVP. But you got to take a lot of shots. You're on that route. You're on <laughs> I that hope route. so. <laughs> but you got. I mean, my like my point is, you got to just take shots. Yeah. And um, you're gonna miss a lot. Mm-hmm. But that isn't. But you're never gonna hit unless you take shots. And yeah. so, that you know, that's that's kind of my philosophy to like pitching. And and Mexican Beverly Hills is an example of like. I really wanted to tell a story, a real story about my community, you know, and a, di- a show people a different, much more human version of what it is like to be a Latino in the country right now. Because I think, you know, Latinidad is associated with a certain, um, like, people just have these ideas. Mm-hmm. And whatever your idea is that you think Latinos are is usually wrong because Latinos are so different, mm-hmm. even within the same family. Yeah. They look different because the mestizo is wild. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they talk different. They think different. They it's vote not, different. It's not it's, the same. It's not homogenous. Yeah, yeah. It's not at all. And so I think that that, you know, I wanted to show a, a story that like just straight up addresses that head on. And I thought that Downey, you know, was the perfect place for that. And, mm-hmm. and, um a lot of people liked it you know it was a lot can of you break down that piece for us yeah i mean it was, it's, it's a it's a personal essay about my life you know i wrote this essay and mm-hmm. i thankfully like the new york times like liked it and they wanted to publish it it was great yeah and it was about you know what it was like moving from the hood to this place that was like known as mexican beverly hills mm-hmm. this very affluent you know middle class latino suburb in southeast los angeles and it's and like it's it's crazy because Downey is like surrounded by hoods, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like Southgate, Linwood, Compton, Paramount, Bell Gardens, Bell, Norwalk, you know, all the dresses all around. Yeah, <clears throat> rodeando, and then Downey's in the middle of this, and Downey starts to become this like um, this kind of like uh, aspirational place. People mm-hmm. want to move there to show like. We made it, mm-hmm. but also they still want good food. You know, yeah. Downey still has <laughs> really good uh, food. Yeah, uh, definitely. Latino food, you know. So, you know, I wrote that essay about what it was like to move there and why Downey is such a trip and how it was hard to adjust. Being like super, super like, it's weird because like when you grow up looking like me, um, you really don't fit in anywhere, mm-hmm. you know. And, and like, because, you know, you're a redheaded Mexican freckles gordito in the hood like speaking spanish yeah not knowing english Mm -hmm. like i got beat up a lot by everybody um and so downey was like the mexican river hills and it's like supposed to be this like shangri-la right like this oh my god finally somewhere where i'm gonna fit in but again i just i didn't fit in and and that's and i thought that was so interesting and and that was that's what that story is about and so you know the story went viral um and um we pitched it you know i got teamed up with this uh brilliant writer named Aaron isaac and we pitched it to a bunch of places a couple places really liked it and wanted it and we decided on um wilmer's company and wilmer again we took it out like the tv process is so long like you have i can to pitch only imagine it. yeah you gotta it's like it's like a video game straight up <laughs> and there's bosses yeah and like you gotta defeat the level and then you get to go to the next level you know i hear that often that there's yeah. like five people in tv that have the money and it's like you're just like maneuvering yeah. playing tetris mm-hmm. trying to see where it fits or who yeah, yeah, yeah. who's the next person you can pitch it to exactly <clears throat> it's like that and and so eventually it winds up at cbs and right now we're you know developing with cbs cbs is so wonderful and they've been really like um great partners in trying to get the story um out there you know Mm -hmm. and um 
like with TV, like you you have to develop a show for a minute. You have to write pilots. They have to test them. Mm-hmm. They have to see if they work as a TV show. Then they order a series. So like we're still in the in the process right now of like uh, we're 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 getting very close. I think for this to be a TV show, but wow. we're but. We're like, if this were a video game, we're like on level like the third one from the last. Oh, know? okay. <laughs> yeah, we need to be two. We need to be two more levels. Yo, but that is so yeah. close. It How is. does that it feel? Feels... How does that feel to know that this piece that you wrote is now inspiring a sitcom? Like that is such a big deal. I can't wait to watch it because I'm manifesting for you. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I it's tri- it's a trip because like there's there's a lot of cognitive dissonance mm. with like when you believe in yourself. Yeah. But then you start doing incredible things that seem very impossible. Mm-hmm. To, or like you don't belong. Yeah, like you don't like. Yeah, like you know, it's it's it, it, it blows my mind. I'm like, I at least once a day, I'm like, yo, I can't believe that worked. You know? Yeah. Like you go, into, it's definitely like you go into a room and you're like, look, here's the story. This is why I think you should tell it. And they're like, yes. And. Anytime that happens to me, it blows my mind. But it's it's especially with TV because like TV raised me, you know, yeah. as my babysitter. <laughs> and so I'm like, yo, like I can't believe I, you know, that I'm talking to CBS or yeah. I'm talking to Wilmer Valderrama and like. And you're inspiring future generations, right? All the people that are that are possibly gonna watch this, the youth that need to see these stories represented, and we don't like. I hope so yeah, it's gonna be so beautiful. I really, honestly, like real talk. I. I my goal is to change the world like ever so slightly um i grew up with like what i felt like we were like no options Mm -hmm. you know it was like be a gangster or like you be a garbage man and yeah garbage man is a great job my cousin's a garbage man he's got a house (laughs) i'm over here with nothing but (laughs) like i'm a writer and he's like that's a great job but those just felt like my only two options in the hood and 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 um and, you know, it was funny, like, we used to, my dad, he bought, like, this little camcorder, mm-hmm. and we used to, like, make little movies, me and my brothers and my friends, and, like, but we didn't think nothing, like, we were in, like, oh, this is a job. What was that phase, though? Because, low-key, I was a little video ho for my cousins and our music videos uh, yeah, and TV shows we used to make, because, Lorena, I'm talking to you. <laughs> but that, but here you are, like, now you're doing right. it. Right, like, oh, you're right, it was it's practice. A, it's a bug, but you don't even think, like, this is a job I can get. Yeah, so but you're just they, playing they're around. Real jobs. They're real blue-collar jobs yeah. that you can actually learn and do, and and I think that that's something I wish I knew when I was younger yeah. and and you know, to get into the game earlier and to, like, focus that way instead of being, like, yo, I'm going to die every fucking day, you know? Like, oh, no, <laughs> today I might die. Oh, no, today I might... Survival. I, yeah, I better... Yeah, like, I better live life to the fullest because yeah. you never know. What's happening Bum- tomorrow, tukka, yeah. Tukka. Like, <laughs> like, that's wild to grow up with that mentality yeah. instead of growing up with this mentality of abundance and being, like... That's so real. The world is my oyster. The world is limitless, like... So, and everything is so limited, right? It's yeah. like we're having this camcorder, but don't you ever think it could be you. Yeah, right? exactly.